Now it's my great pleasure to introduce to you one of my favorite educators, Dr. Holly Lucille, uh, sometimes known as Dr. Holly. She is a nationally recognized licensed naturopathic doctor and educator. She's a consultant in the natural products industry, and perhaps one of her best roles, she is a true patient advocate. She has written several books, including Creating and Maintaining Balance, A Woman's Guide to Safe Natural Hormone Health. She is an expert in the field of integrative medicine. When you look at the media, she is a go-to person for information relating to natural medicine and the integrative medical world and has appeared on shows like Dr. Oz, The Doctors, uh, Lifetime Television for Women, Hallmark Channel, etc., uh, as well as hosting her own show on, uh, on cable as uh, Mystifiers with Dr. Holly. So it is with great pleasure I introduce to you Dr. Holly Lucille. Welcome, Dr. Lucille. Hi, good morning, Cheryl. Thank you so much. All right, are we ready to go? You I bet. guess we're ready. All right, we're ready we're to ready. go. Okay, excellent. Um, yeah, thank you, Cheryl and Lexi and Terry for all, I mean, that introduction just on how to communicate, I wish somebody would actually talk to me every morning like that, just sort of tell me what to do, show me where to do it. It's so clear how we can do it. I think this is awesome. And then, of course, always being a part of uh, Terry and any of the work that he does and getting good information out there to folks, I'm just honored and it's a privilege. So let's start our pre presentation, When Trauma Hits the Tissue, Recovery from Injuries, Exercise, and Surgery. Um, I'm not exactly sure. You know, I, as a practitioner, um, sort of pride myself in having a general practice, more of a family practice, meaning I have these ph philosophical roots in naturopathic medicine and these principles that I follow uh, that, in my opinion, allow me to see anything that comes in the door and at least apply these principles and help people get closer to their health care goals or desires, meaning identify and treat the cause or treat the whole person, um, doctor as teacher, um, respecting the healing power of nature, which is our, our body's ability to naturally heal as long as there's nothing in the way. And so with that thought process, I always am thinking, I don't need to specialize in one section or another. And there are people that do specialize in naturopathic oncology or more physical medicine, but I just have this family practice. But lately, Really, in the last two to three years, I've gotten a lot of folks um, that uh, have had really traumatic things happen injury-wise or uh, injury-wise that's going to lead to surgery. And so um, when we were putting together this presentation, um, I, you know, I, and I also I want to tell you this, I'm not a protocol-oriented practitioner because I think everybody is different. They present differently clinically. They also... Um, have different backgrounds from a nutritional perspective. Uh, they have different health histories. And so I, I don't have this protocol that I have. Oh, you come in with an injury and, you know, you're going to go on Dr. Holly Lucille's protocol for getting better. Um, but I did notice that there are several things in the last couple of years that I have been using that are just amazing when it helps. Uh, when, it, when it comes to helping people heal from injury. So that's what I really want to share with you today. And I know a little bit about recovery, so I don't know if it's, you know, life imitates art or art imitates life, but um, I have been in the CrossFit community for a bit. Um, I'm now a certified second-level CrossFit coach and was a um, – competitive athlete, mass, think master's uh, athlete, think, you know, when I say master's, definitely think old, don't think elite, okay? <laughs> but um, we would have three wads at the workout of the day during one of these competitions, and certainly um, my post-exercise muscle soreness was so bad for many years that I would literally not be able to, you know, get myself down on the toilet without sort of help from my arms and such. Picture on the left here is actually a post-surgery from every crazy thing that I do. I did not get hurt. It was just walking my dog. Um, and at that point in time, it was post-surgery, and the little catheter that they had put into my arm uh, is general anesthesia that kind of allows you to go home and not stay in the uh, hospital. Um, for too long, and it keeps that, that, that shoulder numb, and so some healing can take place. Well, that came out, and so I had this excruciating pain. Uh, I was on the show Wipeout. I was doing a shout-out for natural medicine, and definitely uh, trauma hit my tissue there. Um, the the uh, dirt biking in Cambodia was just a bad idea. Uh, I got swept away in the moment, and I did not have proper gear. I did drop that bike and had a good wound from that. And also, um, my friend, Dr. Tori Hudson, 
uh, I go up to her land at least once a year and help her shape things up uh, and plant a garden. And so I use these power tools that I'm not used to using. So weekend warrior, but nothing traumatic has happened with that chainsaw, I promise you. But I do know a bit about recovery, that is for sure. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, throughout my career as a presenter or a lecturer, author, I've I've come to look a lot of words up, just like, I wonder, you know, let's remind myself what they really mean, because I think they get lost in translation, quite honestly, throughout um, our, our, our use of them. I mean, the best, the best example for me of this is actually I looked up the word diet, because I was, obviously, that's a very heavily connotated word, this diet, that diet, um, and it, was, it blew my mind, and it, it actually changed the way that I practice, because um, if you look up diet in the dictionary, it means habitual nourishment. Uh, so, or how how is a habit? Do you nourish yourself? I love that. And so, I, I talk to my patients like that too. You know, that's how we really frame diet these days because um, food is obviously so much more than just um, nutrients. It's comfort, and it's um, it can be used as a drug and, and celebratory, and so many other things. So that was cool. So recovery, a return to a normal state or of health, mind or strength. Now, what the heck does that mean, right? But it really, really uh, is important for me when I'm dealing with this per- particular type of patient. Um, or people that are having um, recovery issues because one of the pictures that wasn't listed was I got in a very bad motorcycle accident about 10 years ago. And um, I, I, I'm not a litigious person, right? So I, you know, I, it was not, certainly it was not my fault. A car uh, just did not see me and, and really turned right in front of me. And I waddled into work a couple days later in a, a a doctor that was working in my office said, what are you doing here? Like you, you need, and he, he said he need, needed me to go to this, this, this attorney. And I did, I just checked it out. And what this attorney did was he, because I was busted up pretty bad. Um, I was okay. I was really, I mean, I was okay. I was very lucky, but I was busted up. And uh, he took a piece of paper and he drew a line down. He's like, this was you before your accident. This is this is how we need to get you back before your accident or after your accident. Um, and so he was, he was, I mean, I did, I was going to have lasting sequelae from that, that injury and that accident. And so that's what his point was. And this is the way that I look at patients like this. I encourage them. It's an opportunity. We're going to get people back to where they were before and or even stronger. That's always really my goal. And I think when um, people have injuries or accidents, there is an opportunity there to build back stronger um, and to take some time to really rest. I know that I have uh, heeded that lesson many, many times in the last year. So there are some factors that do influence healing and recovery, and there are uh, things that I think are important to take into consideration, whether it's you or your friend or your customers or anybody, uh, your patients that are recovering. Age is certainly a factor. I turned 50, and i got to tell you, I have stopped working out the way that I used to work out because I just simply could not recover as easily as I used to. My tissues are getting older, and when I break them down, it takes longer to to build them back up, and so I do notice that. Um, Nutritional status is extremely important. We're going to go over that quite a bit. Underline, anything going on underline. So um, diabetes, atherosclerosis, stress is a huge one. Um, lack of sleep. You, you, if you don't sleep, you don't recover. If you don't sleep, you don't do a lot of things. You can't lose weight. Uh, sleep is extremely important. That's where human growth hormone is made. That is where we get, uh, you know, tissue repair, rest, restoration. And then also the integrity of the immune system. Um, that definitely affects how quickly or slowly a wound will resolve. And one of the things that I've seen with my patients who are having a hard time and not on par with recovery is their immune system is compromised secondary to what I see as our modern-day confounded, compounded stressors. Um, And I know that this comes up a lot in a lot of different conversations, no matter what we're talking about in health, but it is certainly, certainly something that we need to take into consideration because a wound, quite honestly, and or a, a surgery and or an injury is stressful in and of itself. It, it, it sometimes delays, uh, gets people off of work, um, lack of mobility. There's many things that go into uh, the incident of having trauma hit the tissue, and it becomes a stressor in and of itself. So this whole idea of the immune system is just something that's very, very important. So just, you know, whether it's surgery or exercise, post-exercise, um, an injury, you know, I think what's really important when it comes to um, recovery is that you support 
the natural body's inflammation process. That inflammation, we're always talking about inflammation and wanting to quell inflammation, and that's important. But the inflammation at first when we have a wound or a a, um, a trauma is extremely important. It initiates this process because then we want cell proliferation and then tissue remodeling, okay? We want, uh, that's where we, we get that maybe better and stronger, okay, where we get remodeling. It's true with bro- broken, broken bones. Um, you've probably heard that a break, when some a bone breaks, it's stronger at the break because those cells actually work. There's, there's pressure against them, so they're working to build back stronger. Um, when you, let's just give this example as well, when you push against resistance, right? So your muscles, you break them down, they build back up. That's how your muscles actually can get bigger. Um, or your spine. You know, and I think the number one modality that I recommend for anybody who's going through osteopenia, osteoporosis, is weight-bearing exercise. When that spine feels this resistance against it, its natural sort of inkling is to build back up against it stronger. And so that's what we are looking for. Okay, so let's talk about, now of course inflammation in the beginning is very important, but then we do want to decrease that inflammation because chronic inflammation, um, that's something that is going to delay healing. Same thing with pain. Pain at the onset is a very good communicator. <laughs> it's telling you that, uh-oh, something's wrong or it's some, about to be wrong. Um, and so acute pain is fine, um, and we, we take that into consideration, but it's the chronic pain that we want no part of because uh, it is definitely something that's going to delay healing. Um, and here it is. Acute pain is protective. It is a sign that tissue damage is occurring. It should resolve when the healing is complete um, or before. I try to definitely get pain under control before because then it is a great pathway to healing. And it decreasing inflammation and promoting tissue repair reduces duration of acute pain response. And so that inflammation, like I said, at first, like anything else, even a little mosquito bite, you're going to see that. But then we want that to slowly but surely start to decrease. Now, one of the problems um, that I'm having as a naturopathic doctor um, is, you know, a lot of folks feel like or maybe think that, oh, hey, we just, just you know, prescribe the the wind or the you know bark and berries and what have you but I have to tell you something I our first tenant is first do no harm meaning there are many things in my arsenal and in my knowledge that I can recommend before drugs and surgery because I'm having a big problem with the this is over this is well over a decade but the fourth to fifth leading cause of death in the United States being not the abuse but the appropriate use of over the counter medications um and prescription medications okay so that's just people using these agents um as they're prescribed now don't get me wrong i you know there's a place for everything and i think there's value in all systems of medicine i do but when there's a chance to do something safer and more effectively, in my opinion, or effective and more safely, in my opinion, then I'm going to take it because that is in line with my tenets. But we represent, as Americans, check this out, 5% of the global population, but we consume 80% of the world's supply of prescription pain medications. And that's the other thing I'm going to be talking about. I am um, going to be talking about uh, evidence-based botanical or plant medicines, okay, evidence-based, tons of studies. And if you look around the world, the number one utilized uh, modality is botanical medicine all around the world, and that comes from the World Health Organization, okay? But we, us Americans, are popping those pills, and if it was working, it's fine. But the problem is we're losing people because of it. Acetaminophen is the number one cause of acute liver failure in the United States. There are over 32 thousand deaths per year from the use of those are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory devices like ibuprofen and 16,500 deaths from just ibuprofen alone. Okay, so I know that we can do it better and safer. And some of the things that I'm going to talk about are the use of curcumin, of ginger, of bromelain, and of comfrey. Safe, effective, and natural treatments. So one of my big ones, uh, this is this is this is a shining star. Um, I was listening to a lecture last weekend, and 
a woman, uh, Dr. Lohman, she had said if she was going to a deserted island and she was only able to take one vitamin, okay, so just a vitamin, uh, she would take vitamin C. Um, and I, I agree. Vitamin C, I think, has many, uh, many, many, many uses, and, and sort of it's uh, it's not real sexy. So I think it loses its, its punch, but I think it's amazing. But if I was going to deserted island and I could take one plant extract, one one plant, one, one botanical medicine, uh, curcumin from turmeric is what I would take. Um, you know why? Let me tell you something about these drugs. Um, and let's talk about pain. So Celebrex, it's, a, it's you know, you decrease pain by doing what? It's a COX-2 inhibitor. Well, that's the only thing that Celebrex does. It, well, it does more with side effects, but it inhibits our COX-2 enzyme. So it decreases inflammation pain. All right, so here with curcumin, here's, here's the, 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 the published research on pain and inflammation is amazing. But let me tell you, the research uh, across the board, and I'm talking about things like psoriasis. I am talking about things like um, HPV. I am talking about depression, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes. And the reason that it can have so many evidence-based talking points, in my opinion, is because it has the ability to target so many things in our body as multi modality it's got it it's it just uh, and comparatively it over a hundred over a hundred mechanisms of action in our bodies compared to one of just a drug okay so it's very 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 powerful at proper doses and but the research on pain and inflammation are great and once again safety there's no significant adverse uh, effects i will tell you that if we get up to high enough doses, and um, somebody might experience loose stools, and that is completely recovered if we just decrease that do- dose. So let's talk about one of these studies. So curcumin works as effectively as NSAIDs for pain relief. So in my opinion, it, we have the, you know, it's as effective, but it's so much safer, and it's probably doing 18 other amazing great, oh, 18 million, I should say, other amazing great things in your body. Um, you know, we do have this joke in some of the circles that I talk about that you should take curcumin just so, well, because you're alive, just so you won't die, you know, right? So it's, it's doing so much. But here we've got a study that shows that NSAIDs for pain relief, um, curcumin is just as effective. You know, the other problem, too, with the ibuprofen is I see people certainly for pain if injury or trauma hits the tissue, yes, but they're also popping it for, let's say they get menstrual cramps, let's say they get a headache, let's say they have a hangover. And so it's it's confounded, you know, it's, it's, it's multiple and it, it adds up. And I think that from a side effect perspective, from a GI distress perspective, and from the deaths that we're having from ibuprofen alone, curcumin, this is after six weeks, the curcumin group showed better improvements in pain. That's walking and stairs. Um, and then the time to walk 100 meters and the time to walk a flight of stairs was 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 better as well. So curcumin really shined in this study. Now this, so there's this thing called DOMS I'm very familiar with personally and professionally. It's called delayed onset muscle soreness. All right, so that's when you get a good workout in, and the next day you might go, oh, or you know, the next couple hours that wasn't so bad, that wasn't so bad, and then that next day hits, so it's like, oh. Oh my gosh, I'm so sore. Or you are a little sore, but the next day you're even sorer. Okay, delayed onset muscle soreness. Um, it's a problem for me in many different ways. Um, when I'm starting to get people uh, motivated to get into their life and um, get closer to their healthcare desires, exercise is always a big part of that. And if somebody goes out and experiences pain upon exercise, it is definitely a obstacle for compliance and adherence, (laughs) okay? Pain is not a motivator. Um, And so I don't like that at all. And so this is a double-blind, randomized, controlled crossover study. This is 17 healthy men that experienced regular physical activity but did not follow a low-limb resistance exercise program. Okay, so basically they put these men that had did, that, that, that were not used to resistance exercise with their legs and a single leg press repetition on a leg press machine. Um, I, the study is just sum, summarized here, but it was absolutely amazing. So oral curcumin, that's 10 that's 1,060 milligrams of curcuminoids, and that's really important. Those curcuminoids, you know, it's not turmeric, okay? Turmeric is the food, and it's lovely, and it's been u- used medicinally for a long, long time. And we'll go over this, I believe. Um, but it's these curcuminoids that are, are the active ingredient. And so 
what happened here was the total use of rescue medication. Um, this is with these gentlemen. Um, they, because they had, hang on here, sorry. I'm going to go back. Um, I thought I had another slide on this, but I don't. Um, so muscle damaging protocol was the single leg press. And then um, as you see here, the curcumin group um, had less pain, okay, and this, this vast scale is how they measure the pain scale um, than the control group, okay, so we did better. So I have used curcumin effectively for this delayed onset muscle soreness, and there's many different studies on it. So this is curcumin and post-surgical pain. Um, so what, what this happened, this was a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study of 50 patients after gallbladder removal. Um, they received curcumin or a placebo at discharge. Now they measured their pain, and if they had pain and needed sort of a rescue medication, acetaminophen was the, um, the rescue medication that they used, okay? So in three weeks, the placebo used 39 doses of the acetaminophen, and in three weeks, the creaming group only used seven. So it shows post-surgical pain, which can be absolutely, um, once again, uh, frustrating. It can delay rehab. Um, and I tell people, pain is real when when you know, not only whatever you're having the, pain, the surgery for, but the surgical pain in and of itself is an, is, is an assault to the tissue. Um, I remind people sometimes when they get their blood drawn, a couple days later, like, I think it was a bad stick, right, because it, it's still sore. No, a needle just went in your arm for like a minute. Um, if you've had an IV in for longer than a day or so, or if you unfortunately had to go to the ER, or if you got a nutritional IV, um, that needle poking around in that tissue, that tissue will respond back with inflammation. And the pain is really a good communicator, but it's real. And so post-surgical pain um, can be very, uh, it can delay healing, it can delay rehab. And so curcumin here shines once again. Ginger has been used uh, medicinally over 5,000 years. It's an excellent anti-inflammatory, um, but its it studies on osteoarthritis uh, was found to reduce pain and stiffness 40% better than the placebo. And so you know what I do with folks, quite honestly? It's got anti-inflammatory properties um, similar to the NSAIDs, but much, much safer is I start to get it in their smoothies because we're going to talk a little bit about nutrition. Nutrition is very important to the tissue when it's healing. And you take even like a, see that picture down there? Just take a thing like that and throw it in a smoothie. The medicinal aspects of ginger on pain um, and, and inflammation are amazing, just like that. Certainly you can take standardized extracts of ginger, but if I can get it in somebody's food, I do. Um, so once again, ginger here reduces post-exercise pain. You can see that 34 volunteers consumed two grams of raw ginger, okay, so just like I said, or a placebo for 11 days. The muscle pain induced through arm flexor repetition, okay? So that's basically um, the flexing. Uh, and just when you're flexing a joint, just think about it. You're bringing things closer together. When you're extending it, you're bringing things um, further, the joint further away from itself. And so this would be like a bicep curl. And you see here 24, 48, and 72 hours muscle soreness. Uh, the raw ginger was less. And that's really important. So ginger, awesome food. Um, Bromelain uh, from pineapple, um, it's an enzyme, ideal for reducing inflammation um, after infection or injury. And so I use this quite a bit. And here's where I use it. This is, you know, many of these things you can take um, and you can take, and, and whenever I'm writing recommendations with folks, I'll be very specific if I want them to take it with meals, away from meals, together, twice a day, throughout the day, what have you. This is something bromelain I put at fairly high doses, okay, 500 milligrams four times a day on empty stomach because it is an enzyme. And if you, in my sort of clinical opinion, if you get it closer to food, it's going to work on the food. <laughs> and we wanted to work on that inflammatory protein tissue, that extracellular protein that is causing the inflammation. And I use this all the time. Um, so that's 500 milligrams four times a day on an empty stomach. Also for pain. Um, this was this was basically bromelain. This is four times at 250 milligrams versus diclofenac, um, which is a steroid, I believe, four at 25 milligrams versus control in 34 patients requiring surgical removal of an impacted lower molar. Okay, just saying impacted lower molar, um, I think initiated some pain in me. Uh, the treatment started 
one day prior to oral surgery, and the results were both groups experienced significant reduction in pain versus the placebo, and both groups saw significant improvement in quality of life stores. So you've got a very sort of, uh, I think, invasive drug there, or bromelain from pineapple. My vote, first do no harm. We're going to go with the bromelain first. Now, the topical touch. This is something, this trauma comfrey is something I don't I, I I got out of my desk yesterday and was walking to the bathroom and, like, I cracked my knee on the wall. Like, I just wasn't thinking or I was thinking too much or I was thinking in too many different ways. And I use this stuff all the time. Now, Comfrey used to be known as bone set um, or knit bone because it literally had it's this, this plant, right, has this ability to heal broken bones and skin. So, so amazing. But... Um, it was taken off the market. Like when we when we take these lovely uh, plants and we get them sort of from plant to pill, um, the FDA asked for oral comfrey products to be taken off the market because they had these um, toxic alkaloids that were affecting people's liver and were linked to cancer. Well, now there is this um, special German comfrey that's free of the alkaloids and it's clinically tested as treatment for wounds strains, and sprains. I use this trauma comfrey. It's called trauma all the time. Um, here's a study. This is 215 patients with back muscle strain treated with German uh, comfrey cream or a placebo. And you see right there, the placebo much, much higher from a pain perspective. This stuff works. Um, I, I, you know, it's in my travel kit. It's in my work bag. It's in my backpack. It's in my purse. I have a tube everywhere. This is 20 healthy participants uh, with induced muscle soreness on the upper arms. So this is post-exercise induced pain, very important. There you see the participants responded rate for pain on pressure. Um, 30 minutes, just 30 minutes, the responder at least 50% improvement. That's reduction of pain on pressure at, specific, at specified measurement point. Now, you know when you're sore and somebody touches you, it's like oh, sometimes like, like when I was in my heyday, you know, trying to be all CrossFit and stuff. Um, I sometimes even getting dressed, like even having the pressure of a shirt on, was painful. And so, um, Comfrey worked very, very well in this study. All right, so pain and inflammation, very important. We're talking about ginger and curcumin and Comfrey and bromelain. All right, so those are some of my big hitters uh, with this type of folks. So tissue repair, another really big part of um, then going along the trajectory of getting somebody to heal um, and getting their skin back in the game safely and quickly. So here we're going to talk about zinc. Um, comfrey, again, curcumin is going to come back with a callback, and rhodiola, which is an adaptogen, but it's really, really great um, for post for injuries, sports injuries especially. So as soon, let me tell you something, for uh, about three months, as soon as I see an injury or hear about an injury, I get people on zinc. I actually, because of our, you know, sort of modern day agriculturally uh, tainted soils, I assume deficiency um, and zinc deficiency delays healing. I do. And so I get people on zinc right away. It has a very, very important role in all three stages of this wound healing, tissue healing, inflammation, proliferation, and that tissue remodeling. And so it is definitely a go-to mineral for folks. This is, um, this is actually also, it increases glutathione levels. And so very, very important to do. Um, uh, that's overall healing right there. So this is 58 patients ages, uh, uh, 58 patients with first to third degree burns uh, all receive standard treatment. Group B received an additional 15 milligrams, and I usually up that dose quite a bit, of, of oral elemental zinc daily. Um, so I usually use 30 to 60 milligrams, um, but this was incredible on just increasing that powerful powerhouse of an um, antioxidant, our glutathione, so very, very important. Um, curcumin, th this is a, a study, it was absolutely amazing. You've got, I mean, just to see this, this was this was an animal study. It was 10 days post-injury, okay? The control group received DMSO and the test group curcumin. Look at the curcumin. The normal tissue was actually restored from the wound. Large myofibril fill damage regions indicated regeneration of tissue. And then over here on the control, that, that, that's still healing. There's still 
uh, a lot of scar tissue there. There's no regeneration of those fibers. And so curcumin across the board when it comes to when trauma hits the tissue, very, very important. This comfrey that I've been talking about, it also speeds tissue repair. And once again, we're into that second stage, really, after pain and inflammation is starting to quell, we've got to start getting that tissue back on board. This is 278 patients with fresh abrasions. Uh, the wound was covered with cream and a sterile bandage once daily. We had a control group and we had the comfrey group. And there you have it, right there. Uh, you have, uh, this is relative wound area, and this was being able to see the wound in general and then also take pictures of it, okay? So um, it definitely had a, uh, throughout time, the days, had an impact on speeding that tissue repair. So I mentioned rhodiola. I love rhodiola. I call it my fuse lengthener. It's an adaptogen. Uh, from the east part of the world, and it has tremendous properties. Um, why, why I use it orally um, for sports injuries especially, there was a great study, but it stimulates the synthesis, synthesis of ATP. That's um, adenosine triphosphate. That's our, how we get our energy in the cells within the muscles and the synthesis of glycogen in the muscles and the liver. So this overall helps healing. It's cardioprotective, anti-fatigue. It's an antioxidant. Um, but I use rhodiola uh, as well. Um, there actually, when I was doing a little bit of this research, was a topical application of rhodiola too, which showed that it helped in wound repair. And so overall, great, great plant, great medicinal for healing tissues. So I want to get into um, some other really important factors because, you know, a lot of times when I'm, you know, these these curcumin and, and comfrey and bromelain and rhodiola and those things, you know, it's kind of like the easy part for me, quite honestly, because I have the resources available to me. I understand the, the research. I understand the, the, the evidence that I have just in my practice from folks actually doing this and getting better and getting their skin back in the game and getting their quality of life because those quality of life scores post-injury are extremely important. So that's our goal, right? That line down the middle of the paper, we want the person to restore back to where they were prior to the injury accident but even get stronger. Um, that's the easy part for me, but i got to tell you something. This stuff, this um, stuff that I'm going to talk about, the diet, the rest, the stress, it's the harder part because I can't go home with all of my folks. I want to sometimes. But this is where people really need to have great education when it comes to healing because these things take such a toll. Um, one of the biggest things is that recovery in and of itself triggers an increased caloric requirement. And one of the things that I've seen is a lot of times my patients and my folks that I'm dealing with actually will get a decrease in appetite. And th th this is extremely important to just get good macronutrients on board. We're talking about healthy fats, about 20, 25%. Healthy carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates, I would say 55, 60%. And then the only thing that I actually really increase is the protein a bit, and we'll talk more about that, up to about 30% per day, okay? Um, your, the anabolism is your ability to wear, and t uh, excuse me, grow and heal, okay? Catabolism is that sort of ability to wear and tear. And an injury actually initiates this sort of cat catabolic me metabolism, right? So we actually start, we need to start feeding the wound in order for us to heal overall. Undernutrition slows wound healing. Here's another. This was, um, this was group one was free-fed animals, so they could just eat whenever they wanted. Group two was about 40% fewer calories than the average intake of group one, all right? Both groups then basically got a little skin punch biopsy. You love these animal studies. Um, here's what we found. The calorie restriction of group two slowed wound healing. Group two took up to two days longer to reach 50% of wound closures than animals taking in more calories on a daily basis. So we really want to, um, we really, really want to make sure that people are having good nutrition, okay, nourishment, diet. Um, another I'm sure we think about this as omega-3s, but an anti-inflammatory diet speeds healing as well. So this is post-injury, um, and then this was the wound area that was measured. Wounds healing and osteoarthritis with a control diet versus omega-3 or omega-6 uh, supplemented diet. And you see that the omega-3, that green line there, um, definitely uh, showed 
that an anti-inflammatory diet speeds healing. Now, I will use, depending on somebody's post or excuse me, pre-injury diet and how I can alter it, definitely omega-3 uh, supplementation as well in the mix if I need to. But an anti-inflammatory diet is really important. Um, essential, high, high priority is protein, um, and that's just good, clean protein. And there's many, many ways you can get it, and especially glutamine. Glutamine is an amino acid a non-essential amino acid, it's primary fuel a source for rapid dividing cells, uh, antioxidant activity, it stimulates white blood cell proliferation, prevents further breakdown of tissues. It is a rate-limiting agent for new protein synthesis, which is what we want in this last stage where we're trying to do all of that great remodeling. It is essential for new cell growth, um, protein is. And so protein, healthy nuts and seeds, clean, clean animal proteins, eggs, um, you, uh, clean dairy as well. Protein, I increased just a little bit for the first three to six weeks um, so we can really get that tissue on its way. As I said, sleep, <laughs> cell division, and protein synthesis, and that's the, so generating protein reaches maximum activity during sleep, okay? Deep sleep is the stimulus for the release of growth hormone. Well, that's going to increase protein synthesis. That's going to mobilize free fatty acids for energy, and it promotes bone synthesis and formation of red blood cells. There's so much going on when we are sleeping, and so we got to get people to sleep. And then, of course, um, adrenaline, it sort of adds to that catabolic state. It's, it interferes with cell division required for healing. Um, and so a lot of times the sleep is, is really important, but it's also the rest. And rest is not just doing nothing because we have such primitive brains, in my opinion, that somebody can say that they're resting, but they're on their, you know, smart devices or what have you. And their, that whole hypothalamus pituitary adrenal access is still firing um, multiple times a, an hour. It's not restful. The most important and least respected factor that I have seen in my practice is uh, for successful recovery is somebody's ability to actually get into a restful place and revitalize. That means that the sympathetic, you know, the sympathetic part of our autonomic nervous system is our fight or flight. And once again, in these days, it's not running from a bear, or getting, even getting out of the way of a car that's coming. It is uh, all over the place. It is, you know, relationship issues. It is financial issues. It's balancing your checkbook. It's getting an email from this person. It's being on social media seeing things, it's our, you know, it's all over the place and we just have to be sitting there thinking about things or being externally, low, you know, having a sort of an extro, extroverted sort of sense of ourselves and, and that lack of time being introspective and just spending time with our own thoughts and our own feelings, it's getting completely out of balance. And so I see this a lot and it will impede recovery, so very, very important. Here's a couple studies just to prove it. Um, this was wound healing in students, okay, I had been a student way, way too long, <laughs> and I get it, but so the, the, these, these kids took, the, they had these oral wounds that they volunteered for, right, and it took 40% longer to heal during uh, examination time versus summer vacation, so this was a very extensive test, and it's just summarized right here, um, but so on summer vacation, able to heal, you've got the stress of, of, of um, final exams, forget about it. This is in caregivers. Time to wound uh, healing average nine days longer in caregivers, tons of stress there, versus the control. And caregivers' stress level score was 33% higher than control. So once again, stress is going to get in the way. You know, some of the things that I actually have people do, I love anything that is um, – passive because a lot of times with wounds and post-surgery, there's going to be significant amount of uh, rehab. So I know with my shoulder, you know, I was immobilized for say eight weeks and then my rehabilitation was three to six months after that, you know, and sometimes I still feel like my, my every day is sort of rehab for me um, from a body perspective because that's exactly how I've taken CrossFit, by the way. It's like, hey, can you be fit across different metrics? Can you have endurance? Can you have strength? Can you have agility? Can you have balance? You know, and can you have mobility when you get older? You know, those, that to me is a sign of being fit, and fit is, is good and healthy. I want somebody to be able to grab, have enough grip strength that if they slip on something, they can grab, you know, uh, and not break a hip. Or, um, you know, so it's, it's really a prevention is the cure type of modality for me at this point in time. But I like to increase parasympathetic activity. That is that opposite. That's where you rest, relax, and repair, the opposite of the sympathetic sort of firing of the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal access. 
um, meditation, gratitude, thoughtfulness, uh, eating whole foods, staying hydrated, relaxation, dimming the lights, uh, decreasing the electromagnetic fields, um, binaural programs. There's a great uh, brainwave as an app, and it has these binaural beats along with this ambient sound. I use these quite a bit, getting into an infrared sauna, things like that. And also this is where I come out with more adaptogens, ashwagandha, um, holy basil, uh, very, very important in just helping people modify their stress response so all of the energy of our body can really be used to do what? To heal, to get people's skin back in the game, because this is where I really start to see, um, especially a, a certain, uh, you know, anywhere from 35 on, age-wise, um, it can take you out. It can take you out. It can be a life-changing, altering uh, incident. And I like to, I like to get this on board, this healing process of decreasing pain and inflammation, starting the, that cell proliferation and the remodeling as soon as possible, because I like people to get their skin back in the game and they feel better and healing overall and those quality of life points start to come up. Okay, there's one more thing that I think is really important from an educational perspective about injuries. Yes, they take time. And one of the best things that I can do as a practitioner and as just a good person <laughs> is educate folks as they're going and reminding them up, you know, in, up front and reminding them as their process is underway that we need to be patient. I know I am probably a hypocrite. I have gone back and tried to return to things way too quickly after something has happened to me because it's part of my lifestyle and it's just something that I do and all tons of excuses, but I have done nothing except push sand against the tide in my own healing process. And so this is something that I think is very, very important and um, something that needs to be emphasized, and that patience, you know, just re, really re-emphasizing how much patience, um, and then also uh, congratulating them and showing them the progress as well. Uh, all right, I think that is uh, it. Um, you can find me at drhollylucille.com. Um, I'm on Radio MD every week. We're turning that into a podcast so that's changing got live episodes from the Via uh, Z Living on Z Living and thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much Dr. Holly. Every time I hear you talk about these issues I learn something new. What an excellent presentation and I also want to convey to you that there's many comments in our Q&A box and our chat box thanking you for taking time to provide so much information. So are you ready for a few questions? Let's do this. Yeah, and thank you. Uh, all righty. Well, here's a question that says, if someone has an open wound, before applying liquid Band-Aid or butterfly stitches, can they put some trauma plant or a comfrey cream into the wound before closing it? Yeah, 100%. Yes, absolutely. I mean, not only can they, they should. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I'm telling you, this is like, I, you know, I have... People, like when cold and flu season comes along, I have folks have a first aid kit because the last thing you want to do is be making an appointment or running someplace where your kid is sick or you're sick. These first aid kits, like, and it literally is, what can you, what is in your own, you know, how can you make your house the HMO, uh, your health maintenance organization? You can stock uh -huh. yourself full. And this, comfrey cream, it, you, you got to have it around. I mean, it just, it's the go-to. All right. Uh, here's a... Another question, wanting to know if you would, you know, you did talk about curcumin. Does curcumin upset your stomach or irritate the stomach like ibuprofen does? 100% no. That's one, I mean, that's one of the benefits. In fact, if you've got digestive disturbances, I often use the higher dose curcuminoids, the curcumin, to actually heal, um, help heal that inflammatory gut. Um, it's because it decreases inflammation. It absolutely 100% does not have that same side effect. What I have seen in, 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 in some folks, very, very few, is it's almost like vitamin C. A lot of times we will dose vitamin C to bowel tolerance. That means that you will have a loose stool that you will know is a vitamin C bomb, I call it, okay? So I've seen some loose stools, that's it, but no stomach irritation whatsoever. Yeah, and that's pretty much at high dosages, not at the dose most people would be taking, correct? Exactly, exactly. You know, I've heard that uh, as well. I think that people believe if something works as well as over-the-counter or prescription drugs for alleviating pain and inflammation, then it must have the same side effects as those drugs. So it's kind of a hard concept to wrap your mind around that there are ways of 
addressing pain and inflammation that do not necessarily cause all these adverse effects. That's right, and that's why we're here. (laughs) (laughs) I think they just needed to hear it one more time. It's too good to be true. Uh, Can you apply comfrey cream inside your nose? My son gets staph often from a dry nasal cavity, and he's constantly itching his nose. Um, Yes, absolutely. Please do. I think that would be an incredible use, yes. And this is completely off topic, but I will relay this question to you. And if you uh, are, if you want to defer uh, to another time, that's fine as well. But someone here is really interested in HPV, human papillomavirus. Are there any supplements for people who have HPV? Yeah, you know what? In fact, I would go search Terry Talk Nutrition webinars. Are they, are they on demand, Cheryl? Yes, you can get them on demand um, either on the website itself, Terry Talks Nutrition, or we also have a YouTube channel uh, that has the listing that where people, if it's easier for them to watch it as a YouTube video, they can do it there as well. Uh, so I, my last webinar that I did talked about HPV specifically, um, and so I would suggest to listen to that for sure. Excellent. Great ideas. All right, let me just check, make sure I'm not missing any questions. I'm wait, excuse me. I'm going to let's see. I got to read this, but my screen keeps jumping around. I'm going to have my last breast reconstruction surgery. I used my thighs to reconstruct my breast after a double mastectomy. After I've had the cleanup surgery in two weeks, what would I put on the areas after the drainage bags are taken off? Yeah, so I think the the trauma comfrey um, would be completely appropriate in that perspective. Absolutely, 100 percent. All right. Excellent. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything because they're coming in on both the chat and the Q&A boxes. All right. All right. I think we got them all. Let me just double check one more time. Yes, I think we. one more just came in. Do they need to wait for the stitches to be removed to apply trauma comfrey? You know, you can always check with your surgeon on that, but I would say, no, like I had a basal cell carcinoma removed, um, and it was on my face. <laughs> so I wanted that to not scar, like, a lot. Yeah. And um, and so I used trauma comfrey right away as soon as I could. I mean. And it all turned out well? Oh, it turned out great. You Wonderful. tell me next time you see me. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. Yes, then I think we made it through all of our questions. Thank you so much for staying a little bit later to answer the questions that came through from our participants. We thank you for taking time out of your busy day and your busy practice to share your knowledge with us, and we hope that you'll come back again sometime and do another webinar for us. Can't wait. I love it. Thank you so much, Lexi and Cheryl and Terry, for everything you do. All right. Thank you, Dr. Holly. Listen, folks, if you are interested in natural health and integrative medicine, feel free to sign up for a free weekly newsletter from Terry Talk Nutrition where you can learn the latest of what's going on with innovative techniques to help you with some of your favorite or most pressing health concerns. Uh, You can also listen to past recordings at the Terry Talks Nutrition site. Additionally, as noted earlier in an answer with Dr. Holly, we do have a YouTube channel where you can look for uh, the Terry Talks Nutrition YouTube station and you can listen to any of the past webinars that you are interested in to learn more about integrative therapies and integrative medicine for a whole variety of health applications. Our next event will be a breakthrough botanical for diabetes for individuals who have been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes or people whose doctors are concerned that their blood sugars are starting to run too high. That event will take place on Tuesday, August 23rd at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. And if you are on the list for this webinar, you will most certainly get a notification about that to see if you are interested in joining that webinar as well. We thank you for taking time out of your day to learn more about natural ways to promote health and healing. And so until we meet again, good health to you. Bye-bye.